Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday, August 11th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for where you are. We're watching a couple of systems in the Atlantic today. We've got now Tropical Storm Fred moving into the Dominican Republic, and we have Invest 95L, the next tropical wave to the southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands, and this will be moving westward and could be the next storm to watch in a few days. I'll talk about this briefly at the end of the video, but first we're going to focus on Fred. Here's the close invisible loop showing Hispaniola here in the center of the screen. Puerto Rico is here, and there's eastern Cuba and the Turks and Caicos up here. This storm now has a closed circulation. It acquired one yesterday. It was rather disorganized for a while, and in some ways it still is. Uh, we can see the rotation here in the lower levels as this has chucked along to the south of Puerto Rico and now near the coastline of the Dominican Republic and is about to move over the mountainous island. If we look down here to the southeast of the center, we'll see some leftovers of the mid-level center that was south of the system last night. Uh, throughout the last 12 hours, we had kind of the low-level center moving along on the north side and the mid-level center following along to the south. And we still see a disconnect between the two this morning. And this mismatch in the locations of the low-level vortex and the mid-level vortex are going to be the, the dominant factor in Fred's evolution over the next few days. This is likely to get disrupted strongly by its passage over Hispaniola. These are the tallest mountains in the Atlantic Basin and often rip up and disrupt tropical systems to a severe degree. What normally happens is a low-level vortex like this will maybe jump northward slightly and then resume its northwestward track as uh, this tends to focus rotation on the northern coastline due to the fact that wind flows over water more easily than it flows over the mountains. So we might see it jump a little bit. It'll be hard to track for a while, but we may see it emerge back out in this area near the Turks and Caicos, southern Bahamas, and eastern Cuba within a day or a day and a half. Now, if we look at the water vapor satellite imagery here, we'll see here's again Hispaniola, Bahamas, Florida up here, and uh, currently Fred is currently off the southern coast. And here's that upper level low that we talked about in yesterday's video, continuing to gradually weaken and move westward over Florida. This is bringing a little bit of a light west-southwest flow over this general region. And this flow aloft is starting to impart some wind shear on Fred. And we can start to see that here with cirrus clouds streaming out of the west, getting pretty close to where the center of the system is. And this is going to make it difficult for the system to regain vertical alignment. As I mentioned, we already have the low level center offset from where the mid-level center is. That's a typical outcome of wind shear. And as long as this shear remains, uh, this mismatch in the locations of the two vortices are likely uh, to stick around. We can see how this happens on some of the model forecasts. This is the GFS Ensemble mean 24 hour forecast for Thursday morning. And this blob of color shows where Fred is located at the surface once it emerges off the northern coastline of Hispaniola. Uh, but the barbs here show the upper level wind flow. So you can see that upper level low over Florida. And again, there's just this general west southwesterly flow aloft over the top of where Fred is. And the low level flow directing the storm is out of the east southeast, pushing it toward the Bahamas and Cuba, but with this flow aloft being out of the opposite direction, there is shear here. And what this does is it keeps this tilt going. So if we look at the GFS low level flow, this is the 850 millibar vorticity at that time, you can see the wave axis here. It may not be a closed circ anymore by this time, but you'll see this is where Fred is. If we look at the 500 millibar flow about 10 or 15,000 feet above that, you'll see that the vorticity is focused more toward the east. So again, you can see the mismatch. There's the surface location, there's the mid-level location. This persists even after the system crosses Hispaniola. And for the next few days, this uh, discombobulation of the vortex is likely to keep Fred disorganized. And given the land interaction with Hispaniola, it will likely take quite some time to recover after crossing over the island. Now, as we go forward, the GFS does show that eventually the system may try to reform in the vicinity of the Florida Straits or the eastern Gulf of Mexico. You can see some attempt at re-intensification by Sunday morning over the eastern Gulf. If you look at the run before this, it was a little bit stronger near the western coast of Florida. There's been some varying solutions 
uh, depending on exactly which model run you look at. And the reason for this is, as we talked about in yesterday's video, this upper low over Florida will eventually weaken. Several days of it sitting here means that it will eventually erode somewhat. And so as Fred approaches the Florida Straits or the Florida Peninsula, this trough is a little weaker and this, this upper level flow is also a little bit weaker. We get a little bit more upper level ridging developing over the top of Fred. And while the wind shear will likely never disappear and will likely remain out of the southwesterly direction as the system approaches Florida, it may weaken some and that could allow a slightly more favorable environment for Fred to reorganize, potentially uh, having another go at becoming a tropical storm over this uh, general region as it tracks northwestward. So as we go into the Gulf of Mexico here, again, you can see that upper low continues to weaken and ultimately disappears with just some southwesterly flow remaining. Again, still sheer, but we might see an organizing storm once more. We can see that on the European model, something similar happens. Here's the 24-hour forecast showing Fred crossing over Hispaniola. And then once it emerges in the Bahamas, it starts to look better on the model, but it continues to struggle 24 hours later, still very weak here, may not even have a closed circulation at the surface. And then by Saturday evening, it's over southern Florida. And then by Sunday evening, you can see it's kind of moving up the coast in the eastern Gulf of Mexico and starts to reorganize just a bit here. Still a fairly weak storm overall on this model run, but you can see the attempt at reorganization. And this is something we'll be watching for closely. The details of the forecast will depend a lot on exactly when realignment of the vortex occurs. Again, on the GFS, it's uh, misaligned for even a couple days after crossing Hispaniola. So depending on whether this western part or this eastern part is able to reorganize first, will play a role in determining both the track and the intensity of the storm. We could see it reorganize over a, a fairly broad region where if it forms on the eastern side or reorganizes on the eastern side, it could pass a little bit more toward the east coast of Florida, whereas if it forms closer to Cuba, we could see a track into the Gulf of Mexico. Right now, most models think that the latter will occur, so a track close to the coast of Cuba and then near the west coast of Florida is currently the consensus, uh, but we will also be watching to see if it reforms farther to the northeast and tracks more through the Bahamas and toward the east coast of Florida. Right now, the National Hurricane Center still has a similar track to yesterday's, moving close to the coast of Cuba after passing over Hispaniola and then into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, eventually into the Florida Panhandle by Monday morning. Again, the details of that track could vary over the next couple of days, but this general idea close to Florida in general is expected within a few days as we head toward the weekend. Some restrengthening is still forecast by the National Hurricane Center for the reasons we just talked about, and they have a strengthening storm with winds of about 65 miles per hour by the end of the forecast here. Worth noting that it's possible this just moves right into the Florida Peninsula, in which case it would not be intensifying much over land. And uh, we'll see what it's looking like in here. Uh, much about this part of the track will depend on whether it's able to reorganize immediately after crossing Hispaniola. Right now, it doesn't look likely that the storm uh, will do very well for a while, and it may struggle for a couple days yet. So we're not really expecting anything really intense as this approaches South Florida. And this is likely to be mostly a rain-related event with impacts from flash flooding being the potential concern. A significant wind event not currently expected here, but we do have tropical storm watches expanding through the Turks and Caicos, southern Bahamas, and eastern Cuba in anticipation that elevated winds will start encroaching gradually further northwest with time as we go forward in the forecast. And we'll obviously keep watching this, and we'll know a lot more once the storm is actually across Hispaniola. Right now, given that this is in the way, it could have a variety of looks when it crosses over, so we need to see exactly what it looks like once the crossing is complete. All right, so that's Fred. We're gonna briefly dip back out here and look at the next possible storm that's coming up behind Fred. This is the next tropical wave that's moving westward to the southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. I can show you a closer look at this. And this is a, a tropical wave that is fairly well defined, but still mostly a wave axis. Looks like maybe an elongated kind of wind flow here with an axis oriented southwest to northeast. Could even be an elongated closed circulation, but even if it is, 
it's not very well defined, not very compact or circular, so this is not being called a tropical depression right now. And NHC is currently giving it about a 30% chance of development during the next few days. This is going to continue heading westward. Right now, one of the issues it's facing is there's very strong upper level wind aloft out of the easterly direction. And you can see that kind of blowing off most of the thunderstorm activity to the west of the low level center right at this moment. And if we look at the GFS Ensemble, we'll use the same product we used for FRED. This is showing the uh, low level circulation in color. And then the wind barb show you the upper level wind flow. So you can see that upper level easterly flow causing that shear right now. And uh, this is due to the African, African monsoon outflow that brings that easterly flow off of Africa. This flow weakens as you go to the west. So as 95L moves westward for the next few days, this easterly flow aloft will still be there, but eventually weaken a little bit and allow the wind shear to relax. Could be a slightly more favorable environment for the system as it approaches the Lesser Antilles uh, as we head into the weekend. So by Sunday here, we'll see this upper level ridge centered to the northeast of where the low level circulation is, which is a more ideal placement for tropical development near the Lesser Antilles. So we could see some chance of a storm forming here. And if we look at the European model, we'll see that the storm uh, does indeed organize on the model as it heads toward the Leeward Islands by Saturday evening on this particular model run. And this has been showing up on a few runs in a row here. So there's been some consistency and the GFS is also starting to show signs that development could occur here. So we'll be watching this carefully. We might see probabilities of formation go up over the next couple of days and it is only a few days away from the islands it'll get there pretty quickly so by this weekend we could see another storm in a similar location to where fred crossed into the caribbean uh, just a couple days ago this is the formation probability from the european ensemble just showing that swath and uh, we'll be keeping an eye on that there's fred's swath showing that general track into florida like we mentioned so we'll be watching both these storms over the next few days. Just make sure you have a, a plan ready to go just in case you get threatening weather from either of these systems. Not expecting strong hurricanes at this point from either, uh, but we'll be keeping a close eye just in case. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.